Hey Bag Maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. I see Annette's watching from Chicago. Julie says I'm excited to see the new patterns. Uh, Flume's watching from New York and Patty from Missouri. So welcome to Social Sunday. All day today, I was eagerly anticipating tonight's show because um, on the show tonight, I'm going to be showing the last two out of the four brand new patterns. So it was like every hour I was looking at the clock, is it time yet, is it time yet? So time has finally arrived and I'm super excited to, to share with you uh, the last two of the new patterns. As you can see by the chair next to me, Danny will be joining me on set in just a minute. Um, I wanted to wish uh, Helena a uh, happy birthday. Um, her birthday was uh, the other day, so I hope you had a wonderful day. A um, couple days ago, Danny very kindly helped me um, plant some. I got two trays of native Illinois plants, so I got New England aster and landsleaf coreopsis and um, I started doing some myself with an auger, which is uh, an attachment for your drill with, how would you describe how an auger looks, Danny? Um, it's like a drill bit, but larger. And so um, he was drilling the holes in the ground for me to drop oh the God, plants sir. in. Can you not get in? Sorry. Um, and it went by super fast. I feel like it just flew by. Uh, we had 76 plants to plant and um, normally I was doing them in the past by myself with a shovel, but the auger just made everything so much easier, especially having another person to make the holes in the dirt and basically was just dropping the little plants in the dirt, covering the top and, um, and then it started raining. So we finished just in time. Um, Hello, everyone. I also wanted to show my mom got me this awesome book, How Stella Learned to Talk. Let me see if the camera will pick it up. Um, I recently started following this uh, Instagram account called Hunger for Words, and it's hunger with a, the number four. And uh, it's a dog that has all of these um, buttons, and uh, they're recordable buttons, so uh, the owner has programmed different words for the dog, and the dog knows which button to hit to get what word, um, such as, as you can see on the box, uh, one of them says outside. One of them says play. Didn't our kids show us a video on that as well? Do you remember that? Mm. It was Violet for sure. I'm pretty, Violet, I'm pretty sure. Possibly, Violet. but no, yeah. No, for a fact, a thousand percent. Because they showed the video how the dog could talk to people mm -hmm. with, they had a whole wall of commands, not just four buttons. Right. Maybe like a lot of buttons. 24 buttons, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Three rows. Maybe even of, more. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so thanks, mom. I saved uh, a comment from my mom if you want to put it up there real quick. My mom left this comment on, I, I saw it past the screen. My mom says, hello to everyone. Can't wait to see more of the wallet pattern. And I saw her comments and I was like, oh yeah, I never showed my mom the wallet. I sort of, I don't know. My original version was kind of a little bit rough. And so the one we just f finished filming the video the other day. So she has, hasn't actually uh, seen the wallet in person yet. Um, well, I guess, is it okay if we just jump right into the showing the new pattern, Danny? Sure. All right, um, you want to switch to the overhead camera really quick? All right, so here's uh, the inside of the wallet. As you can see, lots of credit card slots. I, I don't have many cards, and I didn't want to put my IDs or anything in here, but you could see all the spaces for them. Um, there's a section, sort of like an accordion section, in the, the middle of the wallet, and there's a zippered pouch over here. You can put... Um, Small items, coins, uh, I guess folded receipts, space for cash over here. As you can see, it closes with a magnetic snap. You can use either a traditional magnetic snap or if you prefer a pearl snap or a cam snap, uh, whatever you prefer. And let me close this up. I made mine, one of my pattern testers made hers with a uh, foundation paper piece flying geese. Michelle Tripp and I asked her if it was if she would mind if I added them to mine as well because I thought it looked awesome and there's a zipper pocket on the back and the zipper pocket is actually sort of 
an accordion, I think you can probably see on camera, it's sort of like an accordion feature so you can fit a little bit more in there. And I used several different interfacings for the wallet because I just wanted, uh, I was looking for like a particular feel to the finished wallet. So there's no foam interfacing, but there's a combination of various other interfacings. And I did use um, the Kona Sheen for my wallet, for the outside of the wallet. And I also saved another comment on there about the Kona Sheen. I showed this on the live show, I think it was last Sunday. Um, Kathy had a comment too. Um, I received the Kona Sheen in purple and red this week from Fat Quarter Shops and Sarah recommended it and she is right, it is fabulous. Yeah, it looks really great and a nice um, special looking fabric, but um, basically the same thickness as the, the Kona solids. So a um, really nice uh, fabric to work with. And um, you could switch back to the front camera, Danny. And the second project, which I think you saw in the thumbnail, I think, right, Danny? Yes. Um, this is the, let's see, there we go, uh, the Blazing Star bag, and it's a crossbody bag. Let me, um, actually, can you, sorry, can you switch back to the overhead? I'll unzip it on the camera so you could see. Um, so the front pocket has uh, a slip pocket over here, and then in the flap there's a mesh zipper pocket. And I think the fabric line, I was just typing it in earlier today, I think it's called Citrus Grove, and the designer's escaping me, um, but all of these prints are in the same fabric line. So I used a different, even though the fabric requirement calls for the exterior to be all made in one fabric, I used the striped fabric and also another tester used this, these fabrics, Share a Fit Buddy. Um, so her bag looked really great, so I decided to use the same fabrics. There's a zipper pocket in the back, and then a, a reset, recessed zipper on the top, and inside there is a slip pocket on one side and a zipper pocket on the other side, and all of the new projects are sewn right sides together and pulled through um, this particular bag. Everything's pulled through the bottom of one of the zipper pockets. Um, the wallet doesn't have a zipper pocket, but um, technically, um, but everything is sewn right sides together. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited about the new the new projects. Um, they release next Sunday, which is May 8th. Um, the patterns and videos, if you're interested in those, um, they'll be available individually as well as in the four pack video bundle. So it'll be four patterns and videos for $40 if you choose to purchase the bundle and SVG files, projector files, and uh, AO files will be included at no extra charge. And uh, a quick recap, um, if you're not familiar with those, um, SVG files are for electric cutting machines such as the Cricut Maker, um, Brother Scan and Cut, and so on. Projector files are if you have a projector generally mounted on the ceiling and it projects your pattern pieces onto your cutting space. And AO files are for large format printing um, such as can be done at your local co copy shop and obviously the the pattern instructions include printable at home uh, printer pieces so um, whatever your um, selection for uh, cutting out your pattern pieces you have several options there for that um, let's see oh I also wanted to let you know there's a link in the description um, our spring sew along will be for one of the brand new patterns the four new patterns um, so I would appreciate your vote um, if you can choose which of the new patterns is your favorite. These are the four new patterns and the link in the description. Um, it's a quick, easy survey. All you need to do is uh, click the little box uh, next to your favorite and hit submit and we'll be tallying the votes all week. And um, the winner or the highest vote getter will be the choice for the spring sew along starting in a couple of weeks. And I will let you know on next week's show um, which pattern um, got the most votes. So um, if you have a minute, uh, perhaps after the show, if you'd uh, leave your vote in there and we'll be tallying those away. All right, uh, Danny's second favorite part of uh, the Sunday show. When he's on the show, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. And Danny and I are so grateful that you've joined us for the show and uh, we really appreciate it. And I noticed earlier before the show started, Laura 
left a comment, uh, don't forget to uh, leave a like or a thumbs up. So we really appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. You know, I had a, a comment come through and it okay. pertains to William. It says, nice Yu-Gi-Oh looking shirt. This is actually Dragon Ball Z. But that's a side point. My son and his friends love Yu-Gi-Oh. And they actually are going to be starting um, a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament at a local card shop. They're every... I think Saturday they're going to have a tournament and they're going to join in. They bought cards. They're super excited and starts mm -hmm. next week. And uh, since you mentioned that, I brought it up and let you guys share in our fun with Williams Yu-Gi-Oh collection. Yeah, I think they're playing in the tournament and then sleeping over at our house on Saturday nights. Is that I don't sound know. about right? Something no, I think like it's that? Friday night sleepover. Oh, okay. And Saturday the, yeah. the tournament. That's awesome. <laughs> they got to prepare themselves. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sarah, I think I got some picks of the week to show. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is going to be of the Acorn Wallet from Andrea Graham. She made this one, and I love the contrasting stitching. Uh, you got Harry Potter hits in there with the Marauder's Map in the background, if you look at the zipper pulls as well. Uh, I love the fabric choices she did. Excellent photography work. Uh, nine and three quarters. Sarah, is that a reference to Harry Potter of some sort? Yeah, that's for when he oh, was, was going to Hogwarts. Measurement? No, no, um... At the train station, the brick wall where he where there was no platform for nine and three quarters, okay. but then he went through the yeah I think it was the brick wall yeah. Okay, and then on to the second one. It's also Andrea Graham. She made the Marlin backpack. Uh, she did this one with a hundred one Dalmatians theme, and I just I love the fabric in there. It actually looks like furry fabric of some sort, and it looks like a vinyl she chose, which she did a really nice job. Nice paw zipper pulls. Um, I love the fine details with the dalmatian fabric in there with the red handles uh the zippers a again excellent photos but she didn't stop there now she also made a small marlin bag the first one's large this is small and this is an alice in wonderland theme uh fabric and i love it i love the colors i love the fabrics when some of the makers make these i'm sarah i think it's backstitch or there's another company they're really fun animated themed fabrics which are very cool i like them lots of color bright colors it's my kind of thing oh uh, we should mention all of danny's picks for tonight are all of the new patterns that are coming out on may 8th so yep. uh just to clarify okay and uh the next one is amy hutton she did i believe this is a small marlin backpack as well and just the the touch and detail was so awesome in this bag as well I, I believe colors. that's Libs Elliott fabric, um, just in case you're interested in the fabric. That's very similar to the fabric you used. It looks like the same kind of sheen. I don't know if that's like a denim fabric, but it I is. just loved it. Actually, it is. Yeah, good call on that It's one. It's awesome. Really nice details. Attention detail is really good on this one as well. Um, beautiful bag. Uh, great photography as well. I love the fine details, and she really emphasizes it with her pictures. It's beautiful. Oh, by the way, I saw in the comments um, some people mentioned that the the vote for the so long link is not working. I'll I'll check that out after the show. I think I just need to change the permission to make it uh, a public voting link. Sorry about that. Shame on you, sir. <laughs> All right, next one is a group for um, what is the bag name? This one. Oh, I know it's the possum bag. And up first is Shinova. Uh, I love the contrasting. She's got to the light color to the dark. Same thing for Ingrid. She did a beautiful bag. Um, I love, if you look at the fabric, it actually had a nice shine to it. And then Madeline made this one. And looks like she was on vacation because it was like a beach setting. And Michelle Graham made this beautiful tulip pink themed one. I love the color choices. And then we have Nur. Uh, she made this, another beautiful, um, excellent opossum bag. And we're not done yet. It was five. I think we're on six. Okay, uh, yeah, and we have, this is Nur again. She made the um, Blazing Star bag. I love the details in this one. Uh, the colors, I've never seen this fabric before. Um, just beautiful, excellent colors. It's my style. I, I could totally me, see me grabbing this one. I don't think it's themed for uh, male or female. It, it's just, I like the colors. It's very unique, it's great attention to detail, beautiful photos. And we're not done yet. Helena made one as well. And another just, I mean, the fabric is beautiful. I love the color of the zipper on this. Um, the, I don't know, is that antique brass, Sarah? I'm not familiar with 
It looks like it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just beautiful. Really, really nice details. Um, Sometimes even the backing of the, the handles are matching fabric. Very cool. Excellent job, Elena. All right, so those are um, Danny's multiple picks for this week. Um, let's see, what else was I going to say? Oh, um, I'm going to be answering questions in a minute. So if you have a question for me, you can type it in the comments now, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you're watching our show. Uh, before we get over to the questions, oh, um, I think I usually, yeah, anyway. Um, I wanted to announce the winner of last, last week's giveaways. Um, the live winner from last week, who I've already heard back from, was Heather Fortney. But the second winner from last week um, was Simone Rouse. So congratulations to Simone. Okay, please, congratulations. Please email me after the show so that I can uh, record your contact information. And we'll be giving away two more four-pack video bundles at the end of the show. One will be for a live winner, and one will be for uh, a winner where you have the whole week to enter by leaving a comment on this show. All right. Uh, I see a lot of people are digging the new projects, so that's great news. Um, so they're saying great picks, Danny. I don't think they're talking about the projects. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so we got some questions for you. All righty, righty. Uh, Kimberly says, do you know why the hummingbirds fight with each other when they are trying to eat from the feeders? That's a good question. So I'm not a hummingbird expert, but from what I understand is they're territorial just because um, naturally in the wild with plants, uh, supplies are not um, finite. They're limited, and so they will fight over even the, the bird feeders because um, in their mind there's only so much to go around. And uh, generally the females will build their nests um, in a secluded place and away from like uh, such a, food such as the bird feeders. Um, I have that problem with my hummingbirds and if I'm putting up multiple feeders, which I usually do, I try to make them out of eyesight of the other feeder. So for example, I usually have one feeder in the front of the house and then I have one in the back of the house and um, they are usually also guarding the feeders. So for example, last summer, this would happen a lot. A hummingbird would be using the feeder and then would fly off to a nearby bush where he could watch over the feeder and if any birds uh, would try to come in and feed he would dive bomb them so um, that's pretty common as well with the hummingbirds um, i wanted to have a zipper for the kennedy bag can i use the same method of inserting the zipper as the baker street bag you read my mind yes um, that same exact method should work you may need to adjust the length of the zipper panel and also potentially the zipper but yeah that, that same application will definitely work for the kennedy bag Cheryl says, most males are arriving now territorial. Yes, they are. Yeah, the males usually come first to um, scout out the area ahead of uh, younger birds and females. Um, Sarah says, will the wallet hold a cell phone? That's a good question. I've got my cell phone here. Let me take this cash out of here. Yep. Yeah, here's my cell, my cell phone's over here, the light green, and it, it fits inside. Let me make sure I can close it. Yeah, it's sort of a snug fit, but it still closes with the, the cell phone inside. Or if you adjust the snap to make it... Actually, you can adjust the snap because the snap is not going in until the very end. Um, when you mark the placement for the magnetic snap, um, as per the instructions, you can sort of fold the wallet over and see if the placement is how you like it. And if not, you can adjust it before you actually insert it. And like I said, it's the very last few steps. And so it's uh, very easy to make that modification. Um, Laura says, can this be reduced to just one column of cards? Um, you could... I'm not sure if you wanted to omit uh, this one over here, the section over here. You could modify it. Yes, there's a pattern piece, the back side of it, uh, sort of the lining side of the section. You would just cut out two pieces instead of the lining piece and the credit card piece. And 
once you get to the pattern, feel free to email me and I'm happy to, to clarify that. I know it's hard to visualize when you don't actually have access to the pattern yet. Connie says, love your fabric choices. What are the dimensions of the Blazing Star bag? The Blazing Star bag is... about nine inches long by 10 inches high and then two inches wide. So for um, size reference. Um, Brenda says, that looks like an amazing new bag. Add some Insel Bright and would make a great lunch bag. Yeah, I, yeah, you definitely could add that Insel Bright on the lining of this. Um, Carrie says, is there a story behind naming of the opossum bag? I Can you pass me the blue bag right over there? I left all the new bags over here, even the ones that um, I showed last week. So the possum bag has this th pocket on the front and the back to put things inside. And so I guess the naming of the bag came from the animal with the pouch that carries its young in, in, in the pouch when they're really young. So um, that's the naming behind this one. Um, do you put OD coat on the fabric before or after construction? I would recommend applying the OD coat to the fabric. Um, and by the way, if you're not familiar with OD coat, it is a gel that you paint on the fabric to make it um, waterproof or laminate like. Um, I would recommend doing it uh, before cutting out your pattern pieces, or if you prefer to cut out your pieces first and then apply the OD coat. I recommend rough cutting the pieces slightly larger than you need and then after applying the OD coat, letting it dry, ironing your pieces um, with a pressing cloth. Um, then you can cut them down to size just because the OD coat, kind of like when you paint with watercolor paints, how the watercolor and the water kind of makes the paper slightly wavy at first. It's kind of like that with the OD coat and um, that's why I recommend to uh, rough cut the pieces a little bit bigger just to make sure you have accurate uh, cutting for your pieces. Um, Lynette says, what time next week do the patterns go live? I actually, that's a great question. And I usually try to post uh, the patterns early if possible. So I, I don't have a particular time that, I always that I'm always posting, but I do try to post it earlier just so I don't have people asking if it's sold out or um, why it's not available. So um, I feel like I'm on track to post things a little bit earlier. Can you track this one like if it's an out-of-stock item and I'll get a notification when it goes live? They can, yeah. Actually, the I have the product listing, good point, Danny. I have the product listing up on my website for the four-pack video bundle and it just has a graphic coming soon. Um, because we have out-of-stock notifications on our website, if you click on that product listing, there is a box where you can enter your email address and uh, then you'll be automatically notified like the very second that I posted in stock um, in case you'd like to be the very first. Becky says, what are the interfacings used in the wallet? Um, All right. I, need, uh... I don't have the supply list in front of me, but from memory, um, Pollen Shape Flex. I use fusible buckram, a small piece. I also used um, a non-woven interfacing. I think the number is PLF 36. Um, I used uh, Decoville Light. I used Fusible Fleece and I used Decoville Heavy. And granted, I know that's a sort of a big list, but all of the pieces were um, small pieces of interfacing. Uh, okay, it looks like Danny's working on something. So I'm gonna try to pop some questions up. Let's see. I don't know. Let's see if I can remember how to view the queue. Uh, Gail says, um, did you show the inside of the opossum bag? I missed it. So I, I think I showed it on the show last week, but I'll run through it once, once more. Um, so on front and back, there's a pocket with a magnetic snap and it's the same on the front as with the back. There's two options for the strap for this one, either um, as I've shown here, the strap attached to the side of the bag, or there's a second option in the instructions with stitching the strap just to the top edge. And then on the inside, there is um, another man magnetic snap and then um, slip pockets, one on either side. Oh, this is a good question. Um, 
Meyer says the wallet fits inside the blazing star. Um, well, it definitely won't fit in the front pocket, but it, it will fit Sarah, inside. Sarah, good job the, doing it by yourself. <laughs> the body of the bag. There was a troll on Facebook I had to deal with. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the wallet does fit in the bag um, vertically. <laughs> All right, where did you leave off at? <laughs> Will the Blazing Star bag fit my 10-inch tablet? Um, I don't know. Danny, because this is 10 inches tall, does that mean it will fit a 10-inch tablet? or No, because it's going to stick out the top, I would assume. Okay. Because if the front panel is 10 inches, doesn't mean it's 10 inches. You might Once need you unzip to... it, measure the, the depth of it. Okay, I can do that. Up to the zipper point. Nine. may bulge up a little bit. It may fit in there. You could make it taller um and you'll also need to make the side panel um a little bit longer also oh sheila says do you use smaller gauge zippers for wallets than for bags uh, it depends for this particular wallet i use two number three zippers for the wallet Jennifer says, do you sell waterproof canvas? I need to try some. I actually don't, but I have purchased in the past some of the OtterTex waterproof canvas, and I got that on Etsy. Diane says, how long is the sew for each of the new projects? I would say the Opossum bag is probably the quickest, um, even though it is the largest of, out of all of them. Um, I would say the Blazing Star bag and the backpack are about equal sewing time. And then perhaps the wallet would be the longest. I think the wallet is 41 steps um, in the instructions. Michelle says, what is the difficulty level of the wallet? I would say the wallet is an intermediate level sewing project just because there's um, a lot of things inside the accordion pieces and also the um, accordion um, zipper pocket on the back. Um, Kim wanted to know acrylic templates for the new patterns. There will be acrylic templates for the wallet and for, what's the other one? The Blazing Star bag. Um, the Opossum bag. Too large. Too large. The acrylic pieces were just too large. And then the backpack had a few pieces that were really skinny. And so, um, unfortunately, I just decided not to have templates um, just because there's two pieces. Um, this one turned out so nice. There couldn't be templates for. Alex says, do you have any advice about how to take nice photos of our bags? Mine look gorgeous in person if I do say so myself, but in the photos, uh, yeesh, then I'm not comfortable posting them in the group. Um, Overcast. Uh, don't if yeah, take... Take your pictures outside. Um. Don't do it in the sun. And if you are in the sun, say you want to take a picture, make sure the sun is at your back so the sun is shining on the bag and it's not in the actual camera shot. And don't be afraid to zoom in more. So if I'm taking a picture of my head, if you see my hand, my head should be roughly like the size of the picture, but like right here. Don't take a picture of like a big opening and have your bag a little part of the picture. I think that's, if you look- Unless you can crop the picture down. Um, right, it's if you're willing to do editing for sure. Like I'll just give an example. Um, nice tight photo. Um, she's using a backdrop, so let me use like this is an interior picture of a house. This can be done on a desk if the light is facing if that desk is facing a window and that's natural light shining on the bag, and she's just using that as her natural picture. And a lot of cell phones have... Uh, There's different settings on cell like phones. Like portrait mode where you can have the background be blurry like that yes. backpack picture. Yeah, you can try to emulate um, that similar design. But for just a quick example, I'll use this. Say so here's your bag. Here's the photo. Like the here's a window in your house letting light in. Make sure your bag's on this side and you stand in between these two sources. So light's here. You stand here and your bag's here. So the natural light's hitting this and you're taking a picture of the light not behind it so you're not standing behind the bag and behind you, you the bag itself is a light you don't want to have that light shining at the camera you want the light to be shining at the whatever item you're picturing and you're standing with the light direction shooting that picture but taking a picture outdoors is because i'm myself i don't consider myself good at taking pictures 
I, the easiest for me personally is to take a picture outdoors and like Danny mentioned, if it's an overcast day because a lot of times I find the sun shining on either a bag or quilt that I've made makes it look wrinkly when it maybe necessarily isn't and it puts shadows in parts of the bag. So overcast is definitely the easiest um, outdoors and natural light. Dana says, what do you do with your used needles? I actually have a little plastic container. I wrote sharps on the top and I put um, used needles and blades in there and it's, you know, the container's about this big, but it will take me forever to fill it up with um, all my used needles. So I'm um, trying to keep it not in the garbage so no one gets hurt and no wildlife potentially will get hurt when I eventually throw the container away. Sam says, can I use that Kona cotton for all the bags? Yeah, Kona cotton is amazing, comes in so many different colors. They have their regular Kona cotton line and then they have their Kona sheen, which is the, the sparkly fabric that I used uh, for the wallet. I'm trying to think, I used Kona cotton for other things too, like in the opossum bag, this was Kona cotton. A lot of times when I want a, sort of an accent portion on a bag, I, I'll go to Kona Cotton. Um, Kim says, are the tester bag photos you showed also in the Facebook group? They inspire and motivate me to sew those bags. So it's up to the testers if they would like to post them in the group, but um, um, usually they do and we'll be posting some on social media. Last two weeks we posted some on um, Instagram, Facebook, and then Instagram stories. Cheryl says, can you add a crossbody strap to the wallet? Um, trying to think where the best place would be. Maybe the accordion portion over here. They have those, um, what are they called? The name's escaping me right now. It's sort of like a strap that, that's attached. Mm, kind of like a strap end, but it's screwed into the size. Emmeline Bags has them. I'm not sure how big of a portion you need to attach it, but I think that might be, I don't know, that might be the best way to attach it to the wallet. Alex says, any advice on how we can drop the hint about Mother's Day wishes for these new patterns? I don't know. What do you think, Danny? I would uh, print out like a picture of it and say, you know, I would really love these for Mother's Day. That's a good idea. Or email, right? Yeah, I don't know if you want to contact them. Interesting. Like I'm going to take the work out of it for you. We do have gift certificates, so I would recommend um, rather than your Oh, gift, so it's on your account. Right. Rather than your gift purchaser actually purchase it for you, the four-pack video bundle or any of the new patterns, I would recommend they just purchase you a gift certificate. And we do have them in $40 amounts so that when you purchase it with the gift certificate, it will be available in your account rather than in your the person that bought it for you in their own account. Um, Laura says, I'm meaning the width of the bag like a men's size wallet. Um, Take that wallet and stick it inside the bag. That's what she's asking. Oh, like, not the height she wanted. Yeah, it does fit in It does fit in um, lengthwise, the wallet. You could probably see it poking out, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, yep, that was the same question. Thank you, Danny. Um, Linda says, hi, I've made the amethyst bag. My question is, can it be, sca uh, can it be scaled down to make it smaller? Um, yes, you can either make the amethyst project bag, which is this is it right here. And right now it can hold uh, a 12 inch quilt block. And to scale it down, the pattern um, all of the pieces are squares and rectangles, so it will be relatively easy to scale down by, I would suggest measuring, um, the main panel is just a, a rectangle with the corners curved. I would just recommend choosing what size you would like this to be and then making adjustments from there. So, um, I think it was a couple years ago, I showed, um, a quilter's little cardboard tool, I'm trying to think of the name. The name's escaping me, but it helps you choose different percentages for either enlarging or reducing a project. Uh, I'm not good at math, so that tool was really great for me. Um, if you don't have such a tool, you can first cut out your uh, front and back pieces. And then I, I always like using a bit of um, 
bias tape. I just have this piece of bias tape in my studio and whenever I'm actually working on new patterns, I run the bias tape around the perimeter of my actual fabric piece and then this helps me get really close to how big of a piece I have to cut to go um, the piece that goes all the way around. So um, either of those things can work for either enlarging or reducing uh, pieces in a pattern. Gail says, did you show the inside of the opossum bag? I missed it. I think I answered Gail's question already. Um, what fabric, Clovis wanted to know what fabric I used for the wallet. Um, I used, for the outside, I used several colors of Kona sheen. And then for the inside, I used just uh, two different Kona solids because the inside of the wallet uses uh, two different fabrics. Um, the reason I chose two different fabrics for the inside in the instructions is because when I initially wrote the pattern, the lining, the list of lining pieces was so long and I thought it would be easier to keep track of pieces if I broke it up into two different. So in the pattern instructions, I have second secondary fabric, which is this darker blue fabric on the inside, and then lining fabric. So the lists are manageable for all, all of the pieces, exterior lining, and then secondary. Um, Monica says, love that orange fabric. Where did you get it? I, I think someone in the comments I saw when it was going through um, Citrus Grove, um, Whoever was kind enough to comment that also commented the designer's name and um, it's already passed by. So um, I purchased it on Etsy um, and Citrus Grove by Paintbrush Studios as the manufacturer. Amanda says, in the Blazing Star bag, does the top zipper get sewn directly into the side? Blazing Star bag. Yes, the recessed zipper, it's fully enclosed. And I used the same technique on the dot dot dash bag, which was actually my first ever pattern. So I just uh, use this instruction also for um, the Blazing Star bag. Um, Did you ever ask about a comment, Quilter's Assistant Proportional Scale? Yes, that's it. Quilter's Assistant, thank you. Um, do you want to put Sorry, that on the... Sure. We'll get back to Shirley's question. Thank you, uh, Susan. Susan says, you may be thinking of the Quilter's Assistant Proportional Scale. Yes, this is the product that I mentioned. It's just a little cardboard slider where you can um, choose the size that you want your piece. Say, for example, if you wanted this to be like eight inches long and it will give you information on what percentage you need to reduce it, such as if you're printing on your home printer, what percentage you can choose uh, to have it printed at. Shirley says, Danny, what is the fabric name you mentioned with the bright, beautiful cartoon movie characters? Sir, you know that. Backstitch Fabrics. It's a custom uh, fabric group on Facebook. It's a pre-order group, so they don't have fabric for sale. You pre-order the fabric in the group. Linda says, if you don't know this, please tell Sarah, great job on the interview with Karen Brown. Oh, thanks for reminding me, Linda. I was going to mention it on the show. Um, just Get It Done Quilts, which is Karen's YouTube channel. Um, she interviewed me the other day, and you can check out that interview now on her channel. Again, it's called uh, Just Get It Done Quilts. Um, Alex says, I'm going to an event next weekend that prefers clear bags. I'm planning on making a Pinto Stadium bag. Do you recommend certain gauge to use or stay away from? I used 12 gauge on mine. I think 8 gauge is a little too thin uh, for a project entirely made in clear vinyl. I have seen people make it in other gauges, but um, obviously the higher the gauge, the more challenging it will be to sew with the clear vinyl. But again, I used a uh, 12 gauge for the ones that I made. Dee Dee said, will you show the interior of the backpack, please? Yes, do you wanna grab, yep, that one. The inside of the backpack. So this is what it looks like, the front portion. And then the inside has um, slip pockets over here so you can put your cell phone and, and wallet in the other side and then the zipper pocket on the other side. And everything is pulled right side out through the zipper pocket on the inside. The side pockets are just optional. So if you prefer not to have side pockets on your backpack, they're super easy to, to omit. Um, can I give this back to you? Actually, I'm sort of running out of room over here. Um, Janice says, have you ever used Pellon 880? I think that's Craft Fuse. Do you think it can be used in place of SF-101? I wouldn't recommend, uh, actually, 
The Shapeflex SF101 has more drape, so the Craft Fuse is very similar, but maybe slightly lighter than the Decker Bond. So I usually, I've never used it for a lining, um, unless you wanted more of a, a slightly stiff lining, that would be uh, for Craft Fuse. Um, Eileen says, don't you often have additional pics of a bags on the website under each bag pattern? Yes. Um, there's usually sort of a, in the product listings on my website, there's um, sort of a slider and you can click through and see all of the pictures that I've added. Um, I also usually have in the product listings um, a link to a blog post where I show all of the pattern testers photos. Um, so I will have that for um, the new patterns once they're added to the website. Amanda says, how do you get the interfacing behind your um, behind your Kona solids, solids not to, show lines. to not show lines? For some reason, I can always see a line from seams. I'm not sure if you mean when you're working on a quilt, uh, like a shadow of darker fabrics versus lighter fabrics. If that's the question, um, if I'm working on quilt blocks and I have combinations of different colors of fabrics, um, I'll often trim the darker, just the darker fabric slightly smaller in the seams. So for instance, if it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I might trim just the darker piece of fabric in half so that when you press it to the side or press it open, you don't see like the ghostly shadow of the other fabric underneath. I'm not sure if that's what you meant. Um, Shirley says, what are the dates for the sale price, please, before Mother's Day? So the four pack video bundle will be only available May 8th through May 20th, and that'll be available for $40. And then after the 20th, uh, the four pack video bundle goes away forever and the standalone single patterns will always be available. Tamara says, would vinyl not too thick work for the wallet exterior? I, a few pattern testers did make their wallets in vinyl, probably a handful of them, including that one from Andrea. Do you want to post Andrea's picture on the screen again, the wallet? Do you remember which one it was? Yeah. Yeah, so Andrea, um, Addie Cakes Creations, she made her wallet, the exterior, in vinyl. Obviously, the vinyl on the exterior, um, thicker to sew through, but um, obviously doable since Andrea made one in vinyl. I think the only challenging area with the vinyl would be this picture right here, the um, the accordion piece, just because that piece is folded over. I just love that wallet she made so much. I mean, I know, right? I want to contact her. Hey, can you make me one? I don't know if I'm gonna make a men's wallet come back in that style right there, because uh, I, I think that's awesome. I really liked it a lot. Jan says, "Could you downsize the opossum bag?" Yes, in fact, a handful of the pattern testers did print the pattern pieces at a, a smaller percentage and made a smaller version of the uh, possum bag, which is this one right here. Lori says, love all the new projects. Thank you very much, Lori. I've been looking for a wallet pattern that would fit all my very picky criteria and finally found it. The crossbody bag also fits the bill wallet. Well, I'm so happy to hear that. And uh, I don't know why, wallets always make me a little nervous like designing them. So this one, obviously I waited quite a while since I designed a wallet lasts. Um, this one, I was really happy with how it turned out, actually. Um, Scrapping Goddess says, which size is the backpack? I have that tulip pink fabric. I'm definitely making one. So the one, do you want to pass me both sizes and I can hold them both up? So this one's size small. So this one, I would consider like a purse size backpack and Danny's holding size large. So these are the two backpacks together. <laughs> Um, Manalia says, Sarah, do you know if Tex 45 or 70 thread can be used on a Juki TL 2010Q? I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I've not used either of those threads, but I don't know if Christina is watching. For, for some reason, this sounds like a Christina question, but if you've used either of those weights of thread um, on your Juki, let us know in the comments. Danny will try to look out for that and post it on the screen. I think we answered this question already. Um, I did. Um, Carrie says, can the new wall pattern be made with vinyl or cork? So I did see a few of the testers make theirs with vinyl. I haven't seen any yet make the, make it with cork. Um, 
I might be a little concerned with this back accordion piece with cork just because it's such a tight, small fold. If you wanted to make this out of cork, I'd consider leaving the accordion part off and just making it perhaps just a flat zipper going straight across. Imelda says, is there a special, is a special foot really needed for sewing vinyl? So you can either use a walking foot or a Teflon foot. Let me see if I have my Teflon foot out here. So a Teflon foot looks like, let's see if the camera will pick it up. There you go. Teflon foot looks like this. Obviously it's white on the bottom and the Teflon helps it glide over shiny or sticky fabrics like clear vinyl. Sometimes I use it with cork. Uh, regular vinyl. Um, so either one of those um, will make sewing with cork, cork or vinyl. Cork not necessary but vinyl for sure. Make it a lot easier. Um, Wendy says how much will the standalone patterns be? So the pattern by itself will be nine dollars. Um, if you prefer to purchase the pattern with the video it will be fifteen dollars for each each title. Rob says, where did Andrea get the snitch for the front of the wallet? I have no idea, but it's super cool. It's super cool. Um, Tony says, will the backpacks be sold separately, the small one price and the large another? Actually, that's a great question, Tony. So the Marlin backpack, the, the one pattern has both sizes included. So um, you can choose either small or large. Wendy says, thoughts of faux leather for the new patterns. I I... Most of the ones... Or that I've, one I showed with leather. Yeah, I've seen this one. Danny showed a picture. Do you remember which picture it was? Yeah, uh, well, for Helena's, this one's got the leather on it. And Helena's, that's a, equivalent to vinyl, I would assume. Yep. Leather. Uh, the opossum bag. I don't think you had any pictures in there with no. leather or vinyl, but I'm pretty sure I saw at least a few people make this. Same thing with the backpacks and same thing with the wallet. So yeah, it's possible for any of the new the new patterns. Thanks guys, I really appreciate um, all of the questions about the new patterns. Kelly says, will the new backpack take less or more time than the chickadee to sew? That's a tough call. Maybe about the same amount of time maybe a little bit less because there's no zipper panel like there's for the chickadee where the metal frame goes in. They're pretty similar though. They both have that front pocket with the zipper. Should we show all the last four patterns before we uh, call it a show? What do you mean the last four patterns? Like show all them together. Oh yeah, sure, sorry. <laughs> we have the Marlin backpack, that's one. While Danny's showing these, by the way, I will fix the the poll for the vote for the so long as soon as we tune the off for the night. Blazing Star. Mm -hmm. That's two. Acorn wallet, three. Mm -hmm. And the opossum bag, four. So that's all of them. Thank you for everyone to show up. Uh, we appreciate the likes, the comments, mm -hmm. the subscribes, the shares on Facebook. I see they're still going strong. Uh, we really do appreciate that a ton. I know Sarah mentioned earlier, but I do track all that, and um, we do notice it, and thank you for that. <clears throat> All right, so let's get over to the giveaway tonight. Like I mentioned earlier, we'll be giving away two four-pack video bundles. One will be drawn tonight. That will be one of the live viewers. And the second prize will be, you have a whole week to leave a comment on the show like usual. And um, that one will be randomly drawn. So we compile all of the comments from Facebook and YouTube together. And I draw a randomly drawn winner and I'll announce that winner on next week's show. So for the live winner, what numbers do I have to choose from? Uh, 1 through 87. Um, 67? 1 through 20? Um, 5? 3, 4, 5. I'm so glad you don't choose like a, a long number from the second one. Okay, Kimberly Russi, so congratulations to you, Kimberly. Please email me after the show just so I have your contact information. Congratulations, congratulations. to you. And I have another question that you can answer for an extra method of entry for the giveaway. Out of the two projects that I showed tonight, the two new projects, um, the Acorn Wallet or the Blazing Star Bag, Danny will hold up the Blazing Star Bag, um, which one do you like better, the wallet or the Blazing Star Bag? Let us know in the comments. 
Um, thank you so much for watching the show. Again, the new patterns will be released um, on May 8th. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Happy sewing. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.